Hi guys, this is Lady Fuller here coming to you from Blue Mesa Reservoir in Gunnison County. And I'm on the road this week, so I'm coming to you guys from the road. And so look how pretty it is here. It's sunset and I'm a little late because I'm traveling um, by car. So I stopped here because it was so pretty to talk to you guys about kindness. So my last video got cut off, but I'll just say again, my name is Lady Fuller and I'm a habits coach and I work with folks to um, drop bad habits and adopt new habits um, to find happiness in their lives and get unstuck. So please say your name and where you're tuning in from. And um, tonight we're talking about habit. I, every Monday night I talk about habit, good or bad. And this week we're gonna talk about kindness. So what is kindness? And kindness, it just, the answer is it depends. Kindness is subjective. And, um, you know, I ask people when, when, they, when they, they ask me about kindness, I say to them, listen, you know, remember a time when someone was really kind to you and how it made you feel. So like how it made you feel like inside, like how that, you know, warm and fuzzy or, um, and that feeling is what kindness is for you. So the answer is it always depends. Um, so, you know, when I had COVID in January, I was so sick and this uh, friend of mine, Allison, brought me groceries and she didn't just bring me groceries. She actually went to her acupuncturist and brought me all these herbal tinctures and it was so incredibly kind and it made me feel like, you know, I wasn't, <laughs> I didn't have the plague, which is what I felt like when I... Um, had COVID and it just was showed that like this person went above and beyond for me and she didn't have to um, and so that is kindness for me and you know another sort of misconception of what is kindness is that kindness is something that we do for other people but the truth is is kindness can also be an act towards yourself so you know a lot of times I work with clients about kindness um, this sort of cr critical voice in their head. So how many of you guys type yes in the chat have a critical voice in your head? Um, you know, a lot of my clients do. And I always say like, if you met that person on the street that had, you know, was your critical voice, like, would you want to hang out with them? Would you want to get a drink with them? Would you want to get coffee with them? Like chances are probably not. They'd probably be like, get away from me. You're terrible. That our self compassionate side, our, uh, the part our voice in our head that's kind to us, is a much different voice and that voice can be dominant through practice and give us um, the ability to give kindness to others if we're kind to ourselves then we can start to give kindness outward so that's what kindness is and so why would we practice kindness and why would we make it a daily habit so i did this year of kindness with a wonderful book by pamela Pereski, who lives in aspen and she has a book that talks about the idea of writing down something kind you do for someone else every day. So kindness is not um, uh, something that someone else has to acknowledge, right? So it can be like you can close the neighbor's mailbox and ha not have them know, right? We just, we put that energy out into the world. And if you watch my, um, my talk last week, I talked about drinking and it was this idea that like we turn up our vibration um, by, you know, doing things for other people. So, you know, one way to sort of raise our vibration is through a daily act of kindness. So a habit of kindness. So like, what does that look like? Like, what would a habit of kindness look like? And, you know, it could be that every day we want to, you know, do something for someone else. It can be small. It can be continual. It could be someone that needs something and, or it could be for ourselves. So what could you do to your, for yourself that's kind, right? Maybe it's like taking a break, breathing, doing some yoga, taking care of yourself. You know, until we're kind to ourselves, we actually don't fully have the capacity to be kind to other people. Isn't that interesting, right? Like we're not, if we're not whole, like how can we like express kindness? So like another reason why it pays to be kind is actually kindness releases dopamine and serotonin in the brain. So if you're kind to someone else, not only are you spreading kindness out into the universe and actually creating a chain reaction through your kindness, right? Because like your kindness can, you know, have an effect on someone else who then turns around as kind to someone else. And imagine like that type of chain reaction 
in the world, especially after the year we've all had, right, through 2020. But also this, you know, when we're kind to other people, you actually are giving yourself a shot of serotonin and in doing so you actually make yourself happier. So we all believe that like happiness is this thing that comes from, you know, wanting or getting what we want or making more money. And while those things temporarily give us happiness, our habits of kindness specifically or gratitude, they can give us actually like a daily shot of dopamine that actually can make us happier daily, right? So like if you were kind every day, like your set rate of happiness would go up. Amazing, right? I think so. And so I did this, this book where I wrote down something I did kind every single day for a year actually. And the interesting thing about kindness is that it, it forces us to get out of our head and into our hearts, right? Because if we're super myopic or only thinking about ourselves, we, we can't think about other people. But if we start to think about other people, then guess what? We're not thinking about ourselves, which is lovely. <laughs> Probably a break for us overthinkers out there. But the lovely thing about kindness is it comes from the heart, you know, it comes from a different place in your body um, than a lot of other things, right? And like a friend recently told me that it's just like a teaspoon of love, right? Kindness. And that's what we all want more of. And also, as we are able to give ourselves by being kind to others and give ourselves this daily hit of dopamine, then we also sort of like are in control of our own happiness. Right. So like if we know that by putting out kindness into the world, we make ourselves happier, then less things can make us unhappy. Right. Isn't that amazing that we have agency over this like amazing thing that we call happiness? I think so. And, you know, the saying goes, if you don't know how to help someone else, I mean, help yourself, help someone else. And it's totally true. At least I think so. <laughs> and, you know, I think that um, another interesting thing to point out before I close is that, you know, we have the ability to learn and grow, our brains do. And actually kindness adds to this idea that Dr. Andrew Huberman talks about all the time, uh, who's a neuroscientist at Stanford, that our brains have the ability to uh, grow and learn as we age. Um, we're not fixed at a certain you know, IQ or we're not fixed at a certain um, level of happiness. We actually have the ability to make ourselves happier and make ourselves smarter and um, daily acts of kindness are a good one. And if you do something for long enough, so 21 days is a, is a base routine for a habit, but if you practice kindness, just one simple thing every day for over 21 days, then it starts to become habitual. And imagine if you did something habitually kind for someone else or yourself every day of your life. What effect may you have? So I'm gonna ask you guys to try to do something kind for yourself or others for five days. See how you feel. Put comments in the chat, you guys, and thanks so much for joining me. And I'll see you next Monday to talk about a good or a bad habit. Be kind. Thanks, guys. Bye.